Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter, but not the spirit of request. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. The first story. When an internship roommate refused to let them help with the dishes, they complied and added more dirty plates before an inspection that resulted in a write-up. The second story. Employee creatively followed the rules to expose the flaws in the system, triggering a reversal of past claims and repercussions for the HR staff member. The third story. After a sudden layoff, an employee creatively complies with the company's demand to return the laptop by shipping it along with heavy items, incurring an $840 cost. Today's first story is... Don't do dishes? Okay. Back in 2019, I did an internship out of state. It was probably one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. One of the good things about this internship is that housing was provided for anybody participating in internship. Some downsides, however, included, one, our roommates were randomized, meaning we were pretty much put in apartments with anybody doing this internship, and two, the people who run these complexes were extremely strict on rules. On any given day throughout a majority of the internship, these people would inspect our apartment to make sure it was clean. Any sort of mess, even if we weren't the individuals who caused it, were written up. After two write-ups, we would have a meeting with the head of housing, and a third time, we would be kicked out of housing, maybe even terminated from the internship. Luckily for me, it never went that far, but we were written up once, and that's when this story takes place. I was with five other roommates. The one roommate in this story is Emily. Emily seemed nice at first, but ended up being a total B to me. She despised me for no reason whatsoever. I tried being nice to her, and tried doing as much as I could to make her happy, but it was never good enough for her. One such moment was a week where I had a week off from doing any chores. Our chores system was set up in a way where each week, five of us would do something different and one person would have a week off. Well, being off from working, I decided to just stay home and relax. When I went into the kitchen to grab something to eat, however, I noticed dishes stacked up and overflowing in the sink, all dirty and disgusting. I knew this wasn't good. The inspectors haven't been in our apartment in a hot while to inspect the apartment, so I knew they would come in any day to inspect it. I looked over at the fridge, where our chore chart was, to see who was doing dishes this week. Emily. Great. I sighed before deciding to grab the sponge and start scrubbing the dishes. Surely Emily wouldn't care if I washed the dishes for her. After all, she works just as hard as I do, right? This is one less thing for her to do, right? That's what I thought. But a couple minutes later, she came into the apartment in a huff and paused as she saw me doing the dishes. Emily. Excuse me, you know that's not your job. Me. The dishes are piled up and really dirty. I thought I would do some. We might get inspected soon. Emily. I don't care. It's my week to do the dishes, not yours. Hands off. I dropped the dish I was working on in the sink and backed away before going back to my room. I was peeved at her. She didn't need to act like that when I was trying to help her out. But then I thought, now that she was home, she would probably do the dishes herself. After all, she said that was her job, right? Well, I went back out there and back into the kitchen to grab some food again, and she was nowhere to be seen. Her and I share a room, and she never went in there, so she must have gone out again. That's what she usually does when she's not working. I stared at the pile of dishes. The urge to clean them was real, but I thought back to what she said. It was her week to clean it, not mine. So my malicious compliance kicked in and I started making my lunch, adding one more plate to the pile in the sink before going back to my room. Later on that afternoon, I heard a knock on the door. Inspection. Oh boy, here we go. I headed out of my room and went up to the front of the apartment. I greeted them and let them inside, where they immediately started inspecting everything. Like I said, they meant business. One of the inspectors immediately paused as she came into the kitchen and saw a mess of plates in the sink. She gave me a stern look. Inspector, care to explain to me why the dishes are like that? Me, casually. Well, I tried to clean the dishes earlier, but another roommate, Emily last name, got mad at me for what's supposed to be her job. The inspector wrote that all down. I knew this meant we would all most likely get in trouble, but it felt so satisfying knowing that this would come back and bite Emily in the A. The inspector continued looking through the kitchen, finding nothing else wrong, and the other inspector came out finding nothing wrong as well. The dishes were the only problem. Despite that, the inspectors still gave us a slip with our room number on it that said we had failed inspection and that we would be written up before leaving. Later on that night, my other roommates returned home, noticing the write-up slip. 
They started panicking. Some of them got mad at me for not doing the dishes, while one roommate thought that what I did was hilarious. Finally, Emily came back home. As soon as she saw the write-up slip, of course she took her anger out on me. But it seemed as though something clicked and she realized the argument she had with me earlier and she caved. She finally went and did the dishes. Of course, I asked her if she needed help and she pushed me away. About two days later, the same inspectors from before came back to inspect the apartment a second time. I wasn't there to see it, but one of our roommates was there and said we passed inspection that time. We were still bummed for being written up the first time, but thankfully it didn't happen again during my internship. Wow, that's interesting. We see a situation where an attempt to help his roommate Emily led to a comical confrontation, and an interesting response. When you decided to start doing the dishes, in order to keep things tidy and avoid problems with the inspection, you tried to make it easier for her. But Emily's reaction was simply amazing. Your attempt was understandable and reasonable, but she felt that you were breaking the rules of her turn. It's also funny how she forgot about her chores when she got back up to the apartment, and your decisive revenge was adding another plate to the stack in the sink. This reaction led to an inspection, and you were ready to share the true story with the inspectors. And in the end, you come out on top when the inspectors come back and everyone's better off. And Emily realizes that sometimes you need to be more flexible and accept help when it's offered. OP, good job. The second story is, oh, I can't get reimbursed for my telecommuting expenses because they're a few days out of date. Recently, my company announced that they would be reimbursing telecommute expenses on IT equipment purchased during the company-mandated WFH lockdown from, say, March 20 to August 20. I bought a whole new telecommuting setup, monitor, webcam, the works, in the last week of February because A, I was in a position to know the WFH lockdown was coming and wanted to prepare for it, and B, was already WFH because I had close contact with a suspect case. The HR lady, whom we shall call Jacqueline, rejected my claim because it was a few days out of their claimable date range, regardless of my explanations and the spirit of the policy. Jacqueline had a reputation for being extremely anal about policy, frustrating the hell out of everyone. Most of the staff had been cheated out of their rightful claims because of her nonsense, but she was seen positively by senior management as she was so hardworking, she stayed till late every day, scrutinizing everyone's claims so she could reject them. Jack, I can't deviate from policy, even though I literally set them. Please follow the circular to the letter. You'll also need a receipt. No, an online order form does not suffice if it does not have the word receipt in it. Proof of delivery, invoice. Insert extremely onerous proof here. To the letter, huh? Time to scrutinize this B down to the semicolon. Staff are allowed to claim telecommuting expenses for monitors, earphones, mouse pads, and keyboards. Other items not listed are not claimable. Me. Okay, so my new speakers were also not claimable. Are there any other criteria I should know about? Jack. Well, the item ordered must have the word monitor, ear, headphones, set, mouse pad, or keyboard in the description. Me. Does it matter the number of items or order of keywords? Jack. Uh, it's not stated, so no. But if the description is only the model number, I'll need a photo to accompany it. No, I'm too lazy to Google what an LS27R750UENXZA is on your receipt. But please keep in mind that the spirit of reimbursement and only claim for what you need. Me. Oh, like all those previously rejected claims of ours, you smug bee? So anyway, I hatched a plan when I saw my wife shopping on some Chinese websites. E.g. AliExpress. These sellers slap every related keyword onto their product titles just to make sure that it shows up on search. My order list? One electronic keyboard. Yes, the musical instrument. Two, cooling pad for pet animal rodent mouse hamster. Three, baby security monitor HD 1080p Wi-Fi. Four, woman earrings set diamond. Attach the above receipts along with my email exchange with Jack and sent them into her. CC the entire claims department on a Friday evening. Q fallout on Monday morning, where I was virtually summoned by management along with Jacqueline to explain why I thought I could claim for these items. Pulling out the chat transcripts, emails, and past claims from my entire team, I explained that I had fully complied to the letter of the circular and expected to be fully compensated. I cross-referenced past rejected claims where small mistakes in punctuation or just being a minute over the eligible transport claim time caused a rightful claim to be rejected. All in all, I used that session to perform a sound off my entire team's past grievances with having legitimate claims struck off due to Jacqueline's hard A attitude. The management panel's mood were half amused and annoyed. One director literally face palmed when he saw the reasons for how some of our previous claims were rejected. Jacqueline remained on mute and video off throughout the whole session. 
A day later, I was told by my director that management got my message, and to please resubmit a reasonable claims form in exchange for a full review of past claims. The circular was also superseded by a tighter one, claiming that the item must be ICT in nature and meant to be used for work. Thankfully, my wife had needed all those items we purchased, so it was no biggie to have my claim rejected. But a month went by with no further review on past claims. Jacqueline was still being an A. Only one successful telecommute claim so far, hers. Guess who bought 100 computer mouse pads maxing out the claim limit? It was my silent ultimatum to Jacqueline. Reject this and management gets involved again, or approve this quietly. She chose the latter. No, I was not about to die in a Pyrrhic victory. I anonymously reported myself in the HQ whistleblower hotline for making fraudulent claims, triggering auditors to come down hard on Jacqueline and force starting the claims review management had reneged on earlier. I was now nicely asked to get a cancellation and refund for the 100 mouse pads, which I did, thank goodness. That was a gamble on my end, but worth it to follow through out of pure spite, even if I didn't get it refunded. My previous claims were approved, and some of the more egregious rejected claims were retroactively approved. Almost $10,000 worth of claims that I know of, just within my team of five, were retroactively approved, costing the company a significant unexpected expense, factoring in other teams during these challenging times. My colleagues threw a party with the unexpected bonus. Jacqueline was formally reprimanded. No prospects for a promotion or bonus for the next five years, and had some of her own claims retroactively rejected, clawed back from her payroll. Me? I surprisingly still got a good performance review from my boss despite some veiled pressure from a few directors for retaliation. Turns out he also had a huge car rental claim for an official business trip, rejected because he rented an SUV instead of a sedan, which was seen as an unnecessary luxury by Jacqueline, even though rental costs were exactly the same. Way to go, man. I love the description of the mouse, cooling pad for pet mouse, and the mouse pad. The truth is it seems that this woman's bonus was tied to the amount of money she saved for the company, so she was actively looking for opportunities to save money at any cost. Your argument to the management, including other complaints from your team, showed that the policy was indeed unfair. I think the director's smile when he saw the reasons for rejecting the previous applications was a silent reflection of your victory. As a one game, you continued this game by buying 100 computer substrates, and this took Jacqueline out of a comfortable position. Your last action, anonymously reporting yourself for fraud, was the best final chord. You successfully achieved a review of the previous applications and brought your teammates to a new level. Thanks to you, they all got what was due to them, and Jacqueline got her share of justice. The third story is... Send my laptop back after a layoff? Okay. I was recently laid off from my remote job. It was a last-minute video chat with HR, and then my entire access was cut off as soon as the call ended. No time to say goodbye to anyone. No time to retrieve any personal files from my laptop, SH Severance. But then the kicker was telling me that I need to ship their laptop back ASAP. I've had other companies send prepaid laptop boxes to return equipment or just say to keep it. This company expected me to waste my time to package up the computer and then find a place to ship it back. Seems like a lot to ask of someone you just got rid of like a piece of trash. They gave me their shipping account code and told me I can just charge it on their account. I eventually get around to going across town only to be told the code doesn't work, and I have to pay out of pocket. At this point, I'm very annoyed with this process. The company tells me I can pay out of pocket and they'll reimburse me. Okay, I can do that. So I found the most expensive option I could find and added some bathroom tiles into the box to make it extra heavy and had it shipped. I also shipped my mouse and power supplies separately in the same expensive fashion with extra weight. Total cost $840. Cost of laptop probably about $500. Anyways, F them. I did as I was told. Maybe next time they won't fire people and then expect them to drive around town to return their stuff. This story really shows how treating employees with disrespect can lead to responses like this. This can be a super fun way to express your dissatisfaction and show that you wouldn't treat employees like they're worthless. Next time, maybe employers will be more grateful and considerate of their former employees. I hope you enjoy these stories. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.